This is Laura and I have not been able to film an exercise class this week because I've been sick. So, but I've been sick because of stress and gardening really, really helps beat that stress while I'm out here gardening. I planted all these California wildflowers and you can't really tell which one is the weeds until you see the flowers. So this one, I don't know if that's a weed yet or a flower. I know this is a flower, right? I know that's a flower because the only way you can really tell what's a flower and what's a weed is, is by seeing the actual flower. So I'm pretty sure this one, I don't know. I just don't know. I, I know this one's a weed, so I can pull this one. But there's a story in the Bible about the same predicament where Jesus told his followers these stories that are agricultural in nature because there was an, it was an agricultural culture. And you won't really understand a lot of the parables of Jesus unless you garden. So um, I planted all these and now there's weeds growing and I don't know which is the weeds and which is the flower till the flowers come up. And Jesus told his followers that a gardener planted a field of wheat and then the enemies of the gardener came in and sowed tares, which are weeds, in with the wheat. And the workers the next day go, you know, or, you know, when the shoots started coming up, you know, like this, when the shoots started coming up, or more like this, when the shoots started coming up, they said, we don't know which one's the wheat and which is the tares. Should we try to figure it out and pull out the tares and, and the master gardener, Jesus, said, no, don't pull up the tares because you'll injure the wheat as well because they're in the same place and the roots are tender. And if you pull up, if you pull up one, you might pull up the others unless they're fully grown. Once they're fully grown, Jesus said, then you can pull up the tares. And what you do with the tares is you burn them. But what you do with the wheat is you gather it into my storehouse. And obviously he's talking about people. So you will not know who is a wheat and who is a tear or who is a flower and who is a weed until you actually see the fruit. And I had a friend or I have a dear friend who I thought was a Christian for 40 years. I mean, we're talking Bible study, church, the whole deal. And now this friend is saying, they do not believe in God anymore. So, my question to you is, what do you think? Do you think he was saved in the first place? Or do you think he's just having a momentary crisis and we'll come back to the Lord? Well, let's go to the Bible and let's see what the Bible says. The Bible says that once you're saved, Jesus said this actually, Jesus said, that everyone who comes to him belongs to him, that the sheep hear his voice, he's the good shepherd, and they know him and they follow him. And those sheep, nobody can take them out of the hand of Jesus. Jesus is greater than all, and no one can take us out of his hand. No one, because Jesus is greater than all. So, if he was really saved, then there's no way that he can be unsaved. But it also says in Romans 8 that if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. So I can't really remember him ever confessing saving faith in retrospect. I can't remember him ever talking about the Holy Spirit or Jesus as Lord in his life. So now in my opinion, I don't think he ever was saved because if you know Jesus, there's no way you'll leave him. Because this is, we're not talking about culture. We're not talking about America. We're not talking about the church. Are you kidding? If, if I weighed everything by the church and by Christians, oh my gosh, I, I would fall, I would not want to be a Christian either. But we're not talking about church. We're not talking about Christianity. We're not talking about Americanism. We're talking about knowing the Jesus Christ, who's real, who's historical, who've been witnessed by people and known all over the world, regardless of their tribe and, tribe and their culture. And if you really know Jesus, he's so wonderful. You would never leave him. So... 
in my opinion, I don't think he ever knew him. Um, I'm praying that he comes back. I'm praying that if he did know him, that he does come back. And this was just a momentary doubt that he's going through with maybe some outside influence, uh, cultural influence. Maybe, you know, it's hard to be a Christian. It's unpopular to be a Christian. So who knows? But the Bible also says that if you have experienced the love of Christ and partaken of the Holy Spirit, and then you say you don't believe in him anymore, you crucify Christ again, and you lay him out to open shame. But this is not you, my beloved friend. You, I'm sure, will come back to the Lord, to Jesus, not to church, not to Americanism, but to the person of Christ. And I challenge you and everyone to seek the person of Christ, not Christians, not not culture, not Americanism, seek the person of Jesus Christ, who, by the way, was not American, who, by the way, was not culturally American. He was of a different culture than we are in America. And I think a lot of the wrong that, that Christians are doing is probably because of their culture. But Jesus was not bound by that culturism. So, is culturism a word? So anyway, this is my plum tree I wanted to show you. And you can see there's thousands of plums, but they're way too small. And the reason they're way too small and will never get bigger and will never get ripe is because I haven't pruned them. You have to go through and take out half of them so that they can get bigger. And that's what God does with us. He prunes us. See this branch so heavy? And Jesus says, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my load is easy and my burden is light, and you will find rest for souls. And sometimes that rest includes pruning us. And we don't like it. I'm getting pruned right now. Um, I've given the administration of Holy Fit and the website and the certification over to others. And they're... And I'm getting pruned and I'm watching the website, you know, get smaller and smaller and cleaner and cleaner and actually better. But it hurts. It hurts for, for this pruning. And I don't know if you've experienced it, but when God goes in and prunes you so that you can bear more fruit, I think the first reaction we all have is, no, don't do that. That's what my husband said. Don't, don't do that. Don't take all those, don't take away half of the plums. And I said, well, I have to, or they'll never get ripe and they'll never get sweet. And we've been talking about the fruit of the spirit. And I encourage you to do that workout and think about the fruit of the spirit. That's the fruit that the Holy Spirit gifts you with through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, only two believers. There's no way that we could work up love, work up peace, joy. No, we get the love, peace, joy, patience, faithfulness of Jesus Christ as he dwells in us. And it's a sanctifying process. It's a process. Um, but one of the things that our master gardener does to help us get the fruits of the Spirit is he goes through and he prunes out the part that was not real, the part that will hurt our fruit production. He goes out and he takes it off. And our first reaction again is, no! <laughs> but that's part of growing the fruit of the Spirit in us. It's part of the work of the Holy Spirit. And I want to show you my grapevines, the beginning of the grapevines first we had to dig a trellis and the grapevines are going to go across the trellis and grapes take constant pruning. Do you know there's only one fruiting branch every year and all the rest you have to go in and cut every year. So these are going to be my grapes and when we're talking about the fruit of the spirit, it's about abiding in the vine. I put the grape vines that are really tall in my car and the top of one of the vines broke off. Well, that top that broke off, that'll never bear fruit because it's not attached to the vine. And we have to be attached to the vine to 
develop the fruits of the Spirit too, so that the Holy Spirit can gift us with the fruits of the Spirit. And if you're not attached to the vine, if you're not in a, I'm not saying a church, but if you're not in a situation where you have fellow believers and studying the Bible together and loving each other and living life together, experiencing the person of Christ together, experiencing the fruit of Christ in your life, if you're not abiding in the vine, you'll fall away. And that's a dangerous thing. So I want to encourage you to understand the parables of Jesus and read the Bible because, and then maybe you can understand them if you think about it from a gardening perspective. He was speaking with an agricultural society. So here is one of the plants that I had to plant a little deeper because the roots were being exposed. You can see how dry. So I had to plant this a little deeper. And again, if we let our, if we don't have enough soil, and the Bible calls our hearts soil, if we don't have enough soil, the roots are going to dry out of our faith, and we're not going to be able to grow at all, let alone bear fruit. So you've got to have all this soil. And you can see where squirrels got in and ate. Look at this. Squirrels got in and ate all my Swiss chard. And I have no idea how they got in because I had it, I had it tamped down so well. But I just, I just caught a squirrel demon <laughs> in the act. It was digging a hole underneath. And that's what Satan will do. He will try to dig a hole underneath our our life to get in where we can't see him he's tricky he's like a squirrel so you have to keep the squirrels out of your faith and be aware and make your garden squirrel proof so here's another example of something I had to prune today and that's because the Santa Ana winds came through we call them dragon breath here in California and it blew all the soil off and all my plants all the flowers died. This was a healthy plant, but because the soil was blown off, see, you can see it. The soil was all blown off. So now I have to put that soil back on and I had to cut off all the part that was dead because if I don't, then the buds won't generate new flowers. Like here's, here's a bud. It won't generate new flowers. So, you know it hurts to be pruned. Here's another example of pruning. Those leaves were just scorched by the heat. So I just took them off. And that way all of the good nurture will go to the plant. So I want to encourage you to abide in the vine. Watch the fruit of the spirit routine. And... Meditate on the fruits of the Spirit. And I've been meditating on the fruits of the Spirit too. And you know, I love you guys, my subscribers, my Overcomer subscribers on YouTube. And you might think that's crazy, but um, Jesus loves you. He knows you intimately. And he's given me this love for you that doesn't make sense. But the reason I do videos on YouTube is because of his love for you and he's desperate to reach you and it makes me desperate for him to reach you too and that's why I do what I do it's out of love and joy and every time I I sometimes get to where I'm like oh the numbers and YouTube isn't accepting our membership and not promoting us blah 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 I've got to forget all that the reason I do videos on YouTube is to develop help us all develop the fruits of the Spirit to be a community where we can help each other to develop the fruits of the Spirit so let me know what you think um, can someone be saved and then be unsaved? In my opinion, no. I think Jesus is too strong to let that happen. So if you're saved and you're worried about, ooh, am I really saved? Just remember, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, 
you will be saved because you can't do that without the Holy Spirit living in you. And only those of us who have confessed with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, only we have access to the Holy Spirit and our spirits are alive. And if you want to be alive too, let us know. There's wonderful Overcomer community on YouTube. Put a comment in, good, bad, or indifferent. I don't take any comments off, even even really bad ones. I leave them on because that's why I'm up on YouTube is to hear what you think. So let me know what you think and I love you and may the fruit of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, abound in your life so that you experience the person of Jesus. Love you. Bye.